Uh, hello everyone. As today we have online class conducted by School of Life Sciences at the P.S. Abdul Rahman Crescent Institute of Science and Technology. So this is Dr. Wasim. I'm going to present uh, some basics of immunology. So today we will discuss some basics of immunology. We will also discuss why this emerging field is so important for us during this era at all over the globe. So this would be more interesting for us to understand the concept of developing vaccines. In, uh, so immunology is the only field that has shed a bright light to develop drugs or vaccine again different different conditions. So uh, let's talk about uh, uh, very basics of the immunology. So here I have mentioned as new emerging field, of course, immunologists are developing new treatments to some of the major diseases affecting mankind, including infectious diseases, for example, influenza and Ebola, and of course, COVID-19. So um, this immune system is incredibly complex and we still have lots more to find out about how it works. So its origin is usually attributed to Edward Jenner, he is a scientist who discovered in uh, uh, 1796 that cowpox or vaccinia induced protection against human smallpox. So in recent years, immunology has been investigated as an excellent branch of science for, for both medical and biological system. And also over the years, there have been a rapid advancement for better understanding of the immune system and how it function has been known to protect the body from several kinds of infections. So this is all about the basics of basic concepts of the immunology. So uh, without the concept of immune system, we cannot move a bit for immunological studies. So let's talk about a very basic about immune system. So the immune system refers to a cluster of cells and proteins that plays an important role to defend the skin, respiratory passages, intestinal tract and other areas from foreign antigens. For example, some microbes that is uh, bacteria, fungi and parasites and viruses, cancer cells and toxins. So immune system can be categorized in different, system, different stages. So uh, the, it can be categorized with different systems. So let's talk about the very first that is lymphatic system. I hope you must be knowing very well about it. So let's quick revise it. So the lymphatic system plays an important role in the immune surveillance by allowing for the circulation and the um, uh, architecture complex of immune cells and antigen. So immunological surveillance is a kind of definition that it is a monitoring process of the immune system to detect and destroy infected cells in the body. Then white blood cells are called also called leukocytes. These are the cells of the immune system that are involved in protecting the bodies against both infectious diseases and foreign invaders, for example, microbes, toxins, viruses, etc. So these cells are neutrophil, isnophil, basophils, and monocytes. That we will discuss in later slides. Then the spleen is the largest organ in the lymphatic system. The spleen acts as a blood filter. It controls the amount of RBC or red blood cells and blood storage in the body and helps to find infection and also helps to clear the microorganisms and particular antigens for the bloodstream. Then the third important part of the immune system is thymus. As we all know, thymus is a gland or a small organ that known for the immune system. Yes, T cells, also known as T lymphocytes or thymus drive lymphocytes that mature in the thymus gland and play a central role for fighting off uh, foreign invaders such as bacteria, viruses, cancer cells and many more. So this is also we will discuss in coming slides. So bone marrow is a spongy substance found in the center of the bones. The bone marrow is extremely important to the immune system because all the body's body blood cells, including T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes, they originate in the bone marrow. So this is all about the different parts of the immune system. So now let's talk about uh, immunity. So I have put this uh, diagram which comprises that immunity can be categorized into two different kinds of immunity that is innate immunity and acquired immunity. But let's talk about one by one. So uh, for innate immunity, it can be referred to all the defense elements with which uh, an individual is born and always available to protect the body. It is a non-specific type that there is no specificity or of any pathogen or external invaders. That means I would say that it is a non-specific type of defense system. That means it comes at the time of birth and inherited from parents only. So it consists of four different types of barriers that prevents the entry of pathogens or foreign elements into the body. If we talk about physical barrier, that is the primary line or I would say first line of defense mechanism as the skin is the first line of mucus coating on defense. It prevents the entry of the pathogens of the body. So also mucus coating on the epithelium lining the respiratory, gastrointestinal and urogenital tracts also help in trapping microbes. 
Then for physiological barriers, these act as secondary line or second line of defense mechanism as acid present in the stomach that is HCl or hydrochloric acid, you must be knowing it. Saliva in mouth, tears for eyes, they prevent the entry of pathogens or micros, microbes or any foreign bodies or any foreign invaders. So then for cellular barriers, a special type of cells in our body which are more capable to target or kill the disease causing agent, for example, White blood cells, lymphocytes, PMNL. So PMNL is uh, polymorphon nuclear leukocytes. So the components for PMNL are neutrophils, monocytes, macrophages. So that we'll discuss uh, in later slides. At last, we have cytokine barriers. So cells which are virally infected, they release some type of proteins uh, are called as interferons. So interferons is a cytokine that plays a crucial role or a critical role against any kind of infection in the cells. Now next immunity is a acquired immunity or an adaptive immunity. So it is a pathogenic specific and is not present from the birth and develops during an individual's lifetime. And this type of immunity can be adapted after birth either by recognize the diseases or by vaccination process. So it has, it has following characters given below. So one is specificity and other is memory. So specificity means an adaptive immune system's ability to target specific pathogens or antigens. It is more capable to distinguish different foreign invaders. Then the memory, <clears throat> of course, the memory is a unique feature which helps in producing an intensive response when the pathogen attacks the second time. So memory cells record information for your in immune system about how to fight and destroy viruses. When a disease strikes the body, the memory cells instruct the body on how to produce antibodies. Once created, these antibodies are released into the bloodstream and then fight against invaders or foreign antigens. So this is all about the second kind of immunity that is acquired or adaptive immunity. So similarly, acquired immunity can also be classified as active immunity and passive immunity. So we have different two different kinds of immunity that is active or passive. So these are the component of the acquired immunity or adaptive immunity. So for active immunity, it should be noted that it is the immunity developed by the body when it is exposed to the antigens. Antibodies are produced by the body in this case and also introduction of pathogens or microbes either during immunization or by any infection they induce active immunity. So in active immunity these, the, introduction of, the introduction of pathogens or microbes either during immunization or by any infection. So I will give you two examples for this active immunity is that this immunity developed by vaccination and this immunity will also develop by natural infections. So this is all about the active immunity. So parallelly we have passive immunity. It occurs when antibodies are directly given into the body and it is used when the immune response has to be more faster. So here we will discuss about some immune cells or the cells which are present in the immune system. So let's talk about neutrophils. So neutrophils are uh, very important cells. So I hope you might have understood about these neutrophils but uh, let's a uh, quick revision for these cells. So neutrophils are the most common type of white blood cells in the bloodstream and they are considered as the first immune cells to defend against infections. Once any pathogenic attack is there inside the cells, the immune cells travel at the site of an infection and ingest the pathogen by releasing a proteolytic enzyme that may lead to cause pathogenic death. So they make up approximately 40 to 60 percent of the white blood cells in our body. So for any blood testings or for pathological investigation, if the number of such cells are less than 40 to 60 percent, then there is an alarming signal for infection in our body. The next cells are the eosinophils. So eosinophils are recruited from the blood into the tissues at the site of inflammation. So eosinophils are a specialized type of cells within the immune system that are involved in antiparasitic and inflammatory response. So if we have high level of eosinophils rate, then we must be knowing that we have any parasitic infection in our cells. So these are the um, uh, signals or sign for the parasitic infection in the cells. So for basophils, basophils are also type of um, WBCs, although they are produced in the bone marrow, um, but also they are found in many tissues throughout the body. So in allergic reaction, what happens, the immune system is exposed to an allergen. And basophil releases an organic compound, which is known as histamine during allergic reaction. So once the histamine releases, then we will have some kind of itching. So this is all about the basophil cells. The next is monocytes. Monocyte is also a type of WBCs or white blood cells and a type of phagocyte also. So it is made in uh, bone marrow and travel through the blood to tissue in the body where it becomes a macrophage. So macrophage surrounds and kill microorganisms, just foreign material, remove dead cells and boost immune response. 
In other words, macrophages are known as garbage trucks of the immune system because they eat foreign matter. So then we have two com then we have two kinds of lymphocyte that is T cell and B cell. So T cells are a part of the adaptive immune system in which T cell has been trained to recognize a particular antigen. T cell function to actively destroy infected cells as well as to signal other immune cells to participate in the immune response. That is a good function for these cells. Here I would say one interesting thing about both the cells that B cells are like the body's military intelligence system. They find their targets and send defense to lock them. T cells are just like a soldier. They destroy the invaders that the intelligence system finds. That's a wonderful definition for these two lymphocytes. Then natural killer cells, natural killer cells are lymphocytes in the same family as T cells and B cells. Then natural killer cells were first noticed for the ability to kill tumor cells without any prior activation. So they are named as natural killing. Additionally, uh, natural killer cells secrete cytokines which act on other immune cells like macrophages. So this is all about the basic function of the immune cells. Now come to the molecules of the immune system. So let's talk about one by one. So let's talk about antigen. Antigen is a very specific or very important molecule and we must be knowing it very well. But let's have a quick revision for these type of molecules. So antigen is a substance, usually a protein, that stimulates the immune system to produce a set of specific antibodies and that combines with an antibody specific to itself. So combination is very important with the antibody. So uh, next is the immunogen. So immunogen is more or less same as the antigen but there is a slight difference that it doesn't complex with an antibody. But let me define it that it is also a substance, usually a protein, that elicits a cellular immune response and um, antibody production. So it differs from antigen in that it mainly elicits cell response but doesn't complex with an antibody. So this is the slight difference between immunogen and antigen. Then next is epitope. So epitope is a specific piece or a specific segment of the antigen to which an antibody binds. This is, that is the basic definition of epitope. Uh, now next is antibodies. So antibodies are the globulins or the glycoproteins uh, which are produced in the immune system. Glycoproteins means proteins with a carbohydrate content. So these glycoproteins are produced by the immune system of an organism in response to exposure to a foreign molecule and characterized by its specific sign binding site or I would say characterized by its specific binding to a site related to an epitope of that molecule and induces response. So these antibodies are of two types. One is monoclonal antibodies and another is polyclonal antibodies. So monoclonal antibodies are the antibodies which are produced against a single antigenic determinants or single epitope or by a single cell population. So this is the definition of the monoclonal antibodies. The second is the polyclonal antibodies. So polyclonal antibodies are produced by molecules with several different antigenic determinants or epitopes with different several different cell populations. So these are the two basic differences of the uh, monoclonal antibodies and the polyclonal antibodies. So this is the basic structure of the antigenic determinant or epitope with, the, with its binding sites or the recognition sites of the antibody. So as you can see here, these purple linings are just like an epitope. They are able to bind to their recognition sites at the antibody. So this complex structures is clear, clearly showing that the binding affinity of epitope and the uh, antibody. So in addition to that, we have an immunoglobulins. Immunoglobulins are the proteins molecule of the globulin type. They are mainly found in serum or other kinds of body, biological fluids or body fluids. So these are the five different classes of immunoglobulins that is IgA, IgD, Ig, IgG and IgM. So these five different classes of immunoglobulins are found in uh, humans. So let's talk about one by one. So immunological a, that is IgA, they are the serum and mucus secretion, for example, saliva, tears, nasal fluid, sweat, lung, and the gastrointestinal tract. They also play a key role or they are considered as a key player for the defensing of mucosal surfaces against attack by infectious microorganisms or infectious pathogens. And for IgM, this is one of the best immunoglobulins. So why? Because antibody, these are the antibodies, are the first antibodies or the primary antibodies to be produced in the body in response to an infection. So when there is an infection, these are the very first antibodies. They secrete or they produced and um, give the response against infection. So if there is a positive IgM, that may be a signal, that may be a sign of a current or recent infection inside the cells. 
Apart from it, we have different three classes of immunoglobulins that is IgG, IgE and IgD. Well, IgG is the main type of antibody which is mainly found in blood stream and extracellular fluid which are able to uh, regulate infection of the body tissue. So they are also working for the infections. So for immunoglobulins, the immunoglobulin E that is IgE, it plays an important role for allergic reactions. So we have already discussed how the allergic reactions there, how histamine releases, how basophils act on the um, um, cell surfaces. So this is all about the, um, uh, the function of the allergic reactions. So IgE plays an important role for the allergic reaction. Then last is the immunoglobulin D. So IgD have the highest carbohydrate content of all immunoglobulins. So if that means 13% of the content is there for all immunoglobulins. Then uh, the interesting is, thing is that this IgD is staying with IgM on the surface of lymphocytes. So they both friends are staying or sitting or um, living on the same surface of the lymphocyte. So they are present only on the surface of the lymphocyte along with IgM. But uh, the exact function or the exact mechanism mechanism of their, of, of their action is not well understood and is still debatable. So many scientists are working on it. So uh, this is one of the best uh, slide for the application of immunology. So what happens is that uh, for applications that I have put vaccine development. Vaccine development, nowadays vaccine development process is very important because why I have put this COVID-19 because during, during this pandemic condition or pandemic situation, we are facing so many challenges to develop a vaccine against COVID-19. So, and it is also related to the immune response because it will minimize the, uh, it will minimize the uh, action of the infection or action of the virus inside the cells. So, Immune cells or immunology is very much uh, uh, correlated with the vaccine development. Second is the immunotherapy and against the infectious diseases. So immunotherapy is, is a kind of biological therapy or is the treatment of diseases by activating or suppressing the immune system. So immunotherapy is designed to elicit or amplify an immune response or classified as activation immunotherapies. So immunotherapy is also very important application for immunological diseases or immune mediated diseases. Third is immunoelectrophoretic procedures. Immunoelectrophoretic procedure is used or is applicable for detection of the unknown antigen or known antigen or the target protein. So whatever the proteins you want to detect in, detect in your system or in your targeted cell or in your experimental cells so you can find out your targeted protein or targeted molecule with this technique that is immunoelectrophoretic procedure or immunoelectrophoresis or immunoblotting procedure or western blotting procedure. These are the different four different names with the same function. Finally, uh, drug design and development is also a kind of application for immunology. Obviously, if you want to make a drug, if you want to discover a drug, if you want to develop a drug, if you want to design a drug, against infectious, infectious diseases or inflammatory diseases. So you have to uh, work on the drug designing processes and development processes against uh, immune function, uh, immune dysfunction. So this is all about the applications of the immunology. I hope you might have understood very well about the basic concepts of immunology. Thank you very much.